Hey guys, how is everybody doing? So I have a pretty cool game that I want to share with you. This was played at the Tromsø Olympiad in 2014. A memorable event for me as I, uh, it was my first Olympiad. I went as the uh, captain of the Icelandic women's team. I was their coach. So a very memorable event for me and this game was played at that event, with the white pieces, we have Tom's Cantans from Latvia, and with the black pieces, Miguel Ilescas, who is a, a Spanish chess legend. Now, in this game, Cantans had white, and he did open with knight to f3, which is not his normal uh, repertoire. He's using playing e4. C5 was played by Ileskas. Now White could, of course, go back into the Sicilian with E4, but Cantans was playing a flank opening in this case. G3, G6, White Fianceros, same for Black, and now D4. Basically, what we have now is uh, a Grunfeld with colors reversed. So after takes, takes. This is basically a Fianchetta Grunfeld with, uh, with colors reversed. Now, Elias has decided to uh, employ a dragon type structure with d6. And he had a cool idea in mind. After knight c3, bishop to e6, castles, he now took on c3, giving up his strong bishop. In return, he has crippled white's pawn structure on the queen side. And we can imagine pretty easily that these pawns can be attacked with a rook. And the square in front can also be occupied by uh, a black piece at some point. And this opening, this is an interesting line. And this is something you can play uh, with white as well. But then, uh, okay, for white it would be something like c4, some kind of, yeah, Grunfeld, uh, Fianchetto, let's say uh, d5 here. Takes, takes, let's c3, knight b6. This is the same line basically with colors reversed, bishop b3. And if black were to play knight c6, we can take on c6. So this is the same as in, in the game. The only difference is that in the game, white has actually castled here. So after bishop takes c3, as Elias has played, queen d7. And now bishop h3 is more powerful because you have already castled. And usually when you line up like this with a queen and bishop, and you put a piece on h3, you're going to follow up with h5. And try to attack on the h file. White played the somewhat stock standard reply here, rook e1. The idea is that the rook is not under attack after bishop h3. Black plays it nonetheless, and now bishop h1. So why does black play bishop h3 since the bishop anyway goes to h1? Well, one reason is that after h5, which is the logical move now, is that white can't close uh, the king side with h4. You know, answer uh, the Harry attack with the Harry defense. So white, uh, sorry, black would try to open up now with, with h4 and open the h file for his rook. White tried to uh, activate on the queen side, play knight to d4, h4, consistent, rook to b1, and h takes d3. Let's actually put on the, uh, an analysis board color i forgot to do it in the opening but let's um, yeah interesting point here that white can't get greedy here with rook takes b7 which looks good because of bishop takes c6 and the queen is pinned so you can't take on b7 because of bishop takes c6 but you will lose immediately now to g takes h2 king takes h2 and what is the winning move here Actually, many moves of Vien, but uh, this one is the most convincing position due to. You can't take it because of queen h3 and mate on h1. So the option to get greedy is actually not an option. So white should take on g3. He took with the h pawn. Taking with the f pawn is possible, but it looks pretty ugly. So white figured, okay, I'm not getting checkmated on uh, 
on the h file an attack like this well first of all this move doesn't really do anything uh, but why can't I find the move yeah bishop somewhere yeah bishop f3 more like this and queen h3 now you're not mating here and I can actually just take here so whenever you give check you lose the bishop So white figures, okay, I'm not getting made it, so I can take on, on g3, open the h-file. Black plays uh, rook c8, as now white was threatening rook takes b7. For instance, if I uh, move like knight to d8, let's get that one up, up on the board, then we can actually take on b7 with the rook. Knight takes b7, bishop c6. So rook c8. Now knight takes e6, b takes, and queen d4. Nicely attacking the rook and getting the queen into the game now. Queen to a4. And white has a very, very devilish idea here, which he executed and played. First bishop d2. Prophylactic move after knight f6. Now a very sneaky move by white. Play rook b8. And once again, this attack on c6 is becoming a factor. But Ileskas, okay, he could have played king f8, but he took on b8. He allowed bishop take c6. And what's the idea? The queen is pinned. What to do? Did he miss this or did he have something in mind? Black's next move is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And now that I told you there's a move, uh, I think you should be able to find it. Pause it and find the move. The move that Ileska's played here, which caught my attention. Such a wonderful motif. <laughs> Rook H1. Ah. Uh, you can take with the king or the bishop. Of course, if we take with the bishop, we lose the queen. So, taking with the king is the only option. Same thing happens if you play king g2. Now, bishop d5 check. The bishop is pinned. The queen is lost if you take the bishop. So, king g1, and now queen takes c6. And black is just a piece up. This is completely winning. And the game didn't last long. The queen tried to swing over to the king side. Queen takes c3, attacking the rook. Now knight h5, after g4. More, more cool moves, rook h4, pinning the pawn. f3, knight to f4. Queen h8, check, and now king d7. Notably, he stays on the light square, avoiding the black squared bishop, even though it's, it's not threatening to do anything. White took on f4, and actually after rook takes f4, uh, Tom's Canton's uh, Grandmaster of Latia, he resigned. A cool line would, or a cool finish would have been something like queen b8, which is logical, trying to attack this pawn, but then black can play. Rook takes g4, yet another nice move, and this would, would have been a... Yeah, what's your allowed black to finish like this, and just give the mate here. But yeah, very cool game, and the star move, of course. This one right here, rook h1, such, such a beautiful move. Gotta love it. So yeah, that was uh, Kantans uh, against Tileskas from the Tromsø Olympiad. Very nice geometrical motif, rook h1, and I hope you enjoyed this game. I will see you in the next chess video. Bye bye.